Hi guys and welcome back to a quick new compose mistake video. Today I will show you a common mistake that I see people do when it comes to using Jetpack Compose and I built a little demo project here. So what we essentially have here is we have a data class to do items with a title and an is done state which is a boolean and we have a list of some sample to do items here which you could imagine comes from a local database, for example. So your view model could do something with that and then expose that to the UI or something similar. And what you now want to do is, or you want to have a list here, uh, a lazy column with a section for all done to do's and a section for all undone to do's. So you basically just want to group them by their is done Boolean state. So what you do is you just have a state. This could come from your view model here, for example. We just simulate this var to do's. And here you have a list to do's.filter. So you filter um, all to do's that are done. And here you filter all to do's that are not done. This will work. But why is that now a mistake? The mistake lies in filter. Because what will essentially happen here, every time anything inside of this lazy column changes, it doesn't need to be these to do's, it could also be um, anything else, like imagine you would have um, a real to do item here and you check that. So you need to recompose that item for that check mark. And that would also cause this to do's list to get filtered again, even though the list didn't even change. So on every single recomposition here, you will basically loop over your to do's list and filter that by their is done state. That's of course not ideal because recompositions can happen quite frequently, especially if you have things like animations or so. And here it might be quite obvious, but I also often see people use something like, um, for example, having a text here and then saying, okay, to do start find it dot title is, is equal to my to do or so. So you just want to find your to do and then kind of print print the to do or print the title or whatever, then this would of course also be the same issue because you would loop over this list to find your corresponding item and this will happen on every single recomposition and not only when to do's actually changes. Because in the end you only want to do this if to do's changes because then the result of this uh, find function could also change. So how can we actually bypass this? And there are two ways to actually bypass this. Way number one would be with remember. We already have remember here, but what we can do is we can say val done to do's is equal to remember. And we say to do's, oops, no, not that one, to do's that filter it that is done. That will of course be now executed as soon as our code reaches this here and then never again. But we actually want to execute this again every single time to do's changes. So what we can do is we can simply pass our to do's list, oops, as a key here. So uh, that will essentially make remember be re-executed every time to do's changes. So this expression will be re-evaluated again. And then we can take this done to do's and pass it here for our done list. And we can do the same for our undone to do's. So we copy this, say undone to do's. And here we just negate this expression. And then we of course want to use this undone to do's down here as well. So undone to do's. Cool. So that will work and that will only execute this line whenever to do's actually changes and not every time uh, this list is actually recomposed. What is the alternative? I mentioned there are two ways. The alternative is using derived state off. Derived state off is one of the many uh, Jetpack Compose effect handlers we have and one of the most complex ones actually, at least if you want to understand how it works behind the scenes. We don't need to understand that here luckily, um, but let's actually have an alternative here done to do's and I'll just call this derived. And here we can say by remember. So we again use remember, but this time without a key. And here we say derived state off and we put in our expression from up here. And then again, we could also have our undone to do's derived like this. And this will also pretty much give us the same result as using remember. So is there any difference when it comes to using derived state off versus using remember with a key? Yes, there is a difference. So remember with a key will basically, um, if you 
check here the documentation, it will simply give us a list of to do's. Well, here technically as well, uh, technically as well, if we take a look, it also gives us a list of to do, but only because we use this by keyword, if we actually use the equals and we check again, it actually gives us a state of list of to do. So derived state of will actually wrap the result of this kind of calculation in a state and assigns it to this um, variable we have here. If we use by, then we simply directly refer to the state's value. The difference is now that remember with a key will actually always re-execute when this to-dos list actually changes. So whenever to-dos changes, this will actually be triggered and everything that uses this undone to-dos will recompose. The difference to derived state of is that this will also be called every time to-dos changes, but it will actually check if the result of that changed. So with derived state of, we can effectively just save some recompositions because sometimes you might filter your list and it, it will have the same result, even though to do changes. So if you have a key that can change and you don't want to recompose UI, even though the key changes in some scenarios, then you want to use derived state of and else you're fine with remember and a key. So in short, use derived state of if the key, so in this case the to-dos or whatever you use here, changes more frequently than you want to update your UI. But in the end, you should be totally fine with just always using derived state of. So using this, uh, in case that is a little bit too complex now to understand in depth, um, you definitely don't do anything wrong if you use derived state of you, in combination with by remember. That way you at least make sure that your UI recomposes a lot. But all in all, also if you don't care about the deeper complexities here, then you're also totally fine with just using derived state of for your um, states and composition. So whenever a state actually derives of another state, that's why it's called derived state of. So if you wanna calculate a new state, which would be this done to do's derived, out of an existing state, which would be the to-dos, then you want to use the right state off and you should always be fine with using that over remember. But either way, you don't do too much wrong um, with using either of these, at least as long as you use one of these to get rid of this issue that I talked about here, that you would use the filter function on every single recomposition, no matter if the to-dos item actually changes or not. So I hope this video helped you to understand this mistake and you won't do it in future again. If you like this video, then I'm sure you will also love my premium courses, which you can currently get 25% off, including the new one, which is about CICD for Android. So automating common things or common workflows for your Android app. And the discount will actually only last until tonight. So if you watch this video on Sunday when this comes out, then you can still get this discount using the discount code CICD in uh, checkout. And then you can get 25% off of all my courses. Check the link down below to get these. Thanks for the support. And I will see you back in the next video again. Have a nice day. Bye bye.